Ola, your dream vacation to Europe starts from Rs. 99,999 only with GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. So we are here with the legendary Suman Kumar, hey, <laughs> right? Co-creator of Family Man, Farzi, Guns and Gulabs, and the creator of Raghu Tata, which is releasing now. Yeah. I want to talk to you a lot about writing mm. and also about directing because I think there are a lot of people out there who want to become writers. So you're going to give us some good tips about writing. But before that, I want to tell you these words: Say hello to your fridge tonight. Say hello to your fridge tonight. Do you remember this? It's oh. something you wrote a long time back, and you said a oh. long. Yeah, 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 yeah. On Insta, I posted as as a. I don't remember the exact thing I wrote, but right. But it was like something oh, about. Oh, it was. It how hums. the yeah, fridge hums at night. And and un, some ungodly hour, it suddenly decides to come to life. That yeah, one. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that thing? It's like, it's just a auto fridge. I used to live in Indore uh, when I was an IT. Uh, Slave, <laughs> so cubicle slave. I I had bought the second hand fridge, it's some, some old fridge. So it had its own, like you know, quirk and character, and so it'll be quiet all day. Suddenly, at 1 a.m. when you have just hit the sack and you're like dozing off, it'll come to life. So it just scared the shit out of me. So it is an ode to that old fridge nothing else and i find characters in places and inanimate objects like i always, what if a bottle could speak to you like if this bottle would say day and i am just saying yeah, yeah, yeah. so i i think like i'm a little nuts like that so cuz i read that and i was like wow buddy that's wow, wow. <laughs> nobody has ever read that <laughs> <laughs> no. you're the first person with who i'm like sitting across to have a chat and uh, but that's beautiful because you're like you're thinking about actually you know say hello to your fridge because nobody ever treats it like like a person, person yeah. yeah and it's like it's just humming away doing its job but you know please go and be nice to it once in a while you know that's lovely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you said i'm a bit quirky or whatever it is that way but i think that's what you know some a writer has to be right because that's what brings you that personality yeah i, I mean uh, like recently i wrote something I don't know why I wrote it. Honestly, I have no idea why I wrote it. It's like I, I, I slip and slide and go around in meaning, meaningless circles around this distant, uncaring sun. I don't know what it means. Okay. So it could mean many things. But it could be the earth. It could be the earth, and also there is a love story there. Yeah. Like the sun wants to pull you towards him, but you want to fly away, but because of this tension you go around in circles but if you get close you you're going to fall and burn and die and i mean you can go, go, go wow yeah yeah that's amazing yeah. why is this sun a him uh, in this story it's a him okay maybe on wednesday uh, they will become <laughs> <laughs> before talking about other stuff you're also a chess player yeah i'm a, like they call in the in the chess world a coffee house amateur Okay, but you know, is there any similarity between playing chess and writing a screenplay? No, oh, lots. Right. So I just want to talk because it seemed to me like there would be, and yeah. So yeah. go on. So there is a lot of similarity in the sense that chess reflects life. Like, for for, ex for example, chess is the probably the only sport where willful sacrifice of material to gain positional or tactical or strategic advantage is a thing like wow. they, they, they it exists in openings like for example queen's gambit you you are ready to throw away a center pawn uh, to gain uh, a, you know positional advantage and also there is something called as which is central to storytelling is conflict so in chess it's a huge concept maintaining the conflict in the center the central four squares Whoever has control over those squares have better chances of winning the game. So there are many metaphors and and uh, what do you say parallels that you can draw from chess. And like I said, it does not matter how much material you possess. By material, I mean like you know you have the entire army of pawns, all pieces, etc., etc. But 
if you have the elder you are dead it doesn't matter i i am only left with one bishop one knight and one king but i can still be winning right that's the beauty of the and what fascinates about me about chess is the two things one is it's like life you you i mean now ai has come in engines have come in we still cannot predict a game how it's going to go so that's the beauty of it so uh, yeah and when it comes to screen writing especially that's the storytelling part when it comes to screen writing part of it the approach to chess is you have to be well versed with the opening sequence of moves and then middle game like you decide okay i'm going to go attack on the queen side that's what the opening does and i'm going to gain material advantage here and then somehow right. the game or so there are various strategies so based on your strategies your tactics and you have to see like four moves ahead five moves i mean grandmaster see multiple moves ahead that's different but i'm just saying that so in a in a screenplay you know you have shown this in a to a and then it has to make sense in end of act to b or act 3 i don't know so it's very structural very strategic in the sense structure is everything in screenplay right like you start the story bang in the middle if a story demands it yeah if a narrative demands it so uh, there are a lot of parallels between chess and maybe that's why i'm drawn to it too i didn't know because i've been a storyteller since third standard right but where did you first discover what a screenplay was I, i knew because i used to read a lot of screenplays which were available online back in the day you had to search for it now it's easily available right. so i used to read and watch like i used to hire like dvds and what not sit and see oh and i kind of drawn to coin brothers the coin brothers but the thing about coin brothers is they wrote and directed their own stuff so you that's a maybe you'll be confused if you're writing for someone who's directing but coin brothers like some of the things that i've noticed is i think if i'm not wrong they don't write uh day like you know in the and the scene title they'll just write if it's night it's night otherwise it's assumed that everything is day things like that very minimalistic very beautifully uh, you know it leaves a lot for other artists to improvise and uh, all that so so that's how i kind of had an inkling about how a screenplay flows and then i i met uh, dk dk so i read my blog i used to write a lot of stories based on my uh, you know wonder years in chittur andhra so i used to write about perfect love letter how i struggled to write a love letter to this girl etc etc uh, how i learned swimming in an irrigation well so on so forth so in one of the stories dk featured uh, so like my mom used to say yaar rafa strength dk unyam manna vairra nee irke like that she used to compare you know how parents do but we were good friends in ninth standard when we met we started writing like novel laws and exchange and critique each other's work and then life happened he went off to america i was here and finally 2010 he he i was working uh, still working in bangalore and i get a call from him saying i read your blog he's like how the fuck are you so your story is detailing is beautiful do you want to work with us and i said cool so, but i said i don't know anything about this writing for films so he's like don't worry so that's actually i learned on the job okay with rajan dk in terms of uh you know you know how they started out as indie and they still have that indie spirit in them yeah yeah they always write so economically when i say economically minimalistically not economically so minimalistically so that uh, and then i also had my own uh the learning never stops so one of the greatest epiphanies uh, happened to me when i discovered that a screenplay is not a, a literary pursuit it's a technical document yeah the minute I realized it. Said, oh my God! Yes, of course. We cannot write. And he thought, and 50 pages. When that happened, then I you know started looking at it in a whole different light. So yeah, that's been my journey. I'm still learning. Right. Is Raghu Tata your first independent work? No, Test was mine. The Test for uh, why not studios? Shashi's film. Shashi yeah, Kant's yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I that was I that was my story, uh, and then we co-wrote the screenplay, uh, Shashi and I. that was my first i mean if you in terms of writing uh, directing obviously raghutata is my first, first uh, is my debut directorial so tell me how you write in terms of okay the concept of raghutata is this tell me that i mean i know we've seen the the trailer mm. but just tell me in your words raghutata is the hilarious story of this rebellious 
young woman. He always used two adjectives. Huh? Hilarious, rebellious. I have to. I yeah. have to use the word. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's a hilarious story of uh, rebellious Kyle Wee who is forced to choose between principle and patriarchy. Okay. okay. That's the log line. I mean, IMDb log line. Yeah. Uh, it, it is the story of this uh, Kyle Wee who uh, fights imposition and known for her fiery rebellious spirit. And something happens where she is forced to like, you know, uh, compromise on her principle. And what happens after that is the story. It's a comedy. What was the first thing that, that struck you when, when, when you're like, how did the big thing begin? Uh, the thing began, as it always does in a conversation with friends. So Kingsley, who is from Kanyakumari, but now he lives in Singapore. Kingsley, Anand Krishnamurti, sound designer. Uh, we, were all, we, like, we go back a long way, like more than 20 years. So Anand Krishnamurti, Sentil, we were all sitting around in Anand's house in Gurwamyo. And Kingsley was just narrating this funny thing about how his grandfather, Tata, used to make fun of his father, who was protesting against Hindi imposition. But he took a, he, he had to clear some exam, Hindi exam, to get something, promotion or something. Yeah. Uh, I vaguely remember, I could be, I, I know, but this is the premise. Right. I said, the Macha, I'm making this movie. So and it took like 12 to 14 years, but here we are. So, <laughs> so that's the origin story of Raghutata. That's the origin story. Yeah. So when you start to write, right, uh, anything, uh, mm. forget the ones that you're doing with Raj and DK because that's a that's a more yeah, of a yeah. collaboration. But let's say you're sitting down yourself to write Raghutata, right? Two ways people do things. One is one is the structured step outline, or point outline kind of a thing, saying scene one, this is the content. Scene two, this right. is the content. Then the the other other school is like. I'm just going to start writing because I have the vague thing in my head and I'm just going to start start writing I'm scene 1, scene 2, scene 3, dialogue, whatever it is. Mm. Which school are you? To me, the most important thing is, am I telling, do I have a story? And if I have a story, how do I mount it? For it to, for me to bring it to its true potential. That's the quest always. It's not even writing screenplay. For me, that is the... Mm. And I approach it, there is no one, uh, you know, correct way to this, it's, uh, it's horses for courses, as they say. So, like sometimes what happens is, uh, a br idea will come. Like for example, Raghutata, the idea was, a guy who is the face of the Hindi imposition protest is forced to learn Hindi to get a girl. Mm. But I wasn't happy with it, because I'm like, how long will the guy keep getting the girl? It's so boring, you take them this part out of it, it's a guy gets girl story, it's boring. Mm. Then I said, how do I flip it on its head? And I tried to flip it on its head and there, then it became, oh, it's about the girl and what not. The story became that. So this process happens almost with every story of mine. Yeah. Okay. And how I write is, first I write the synopsis to say, okay, these are my boundaries. The synopsis for me a three pager, sometimes even a five pager, is basically, the our empty plot that's what a synopsis does now once that is done i'll have to crack the structure which is where whatever you want to call it like you know step out line treatment whatever they call it uh, that i do and i we riff on it and that's the, that's when i invite collaborators like for ragutata uh, manoj who worked on family man manoj kumar kalevanan uh, he wrote the tamil dialogues for so I roped him in as a dialogue writer, but he did more than dialogues. Hmm. He is also a lyricist on the movie, acted in the movie, and also he will riff with me big time on the screenplay. And hmm. I had two stand-up comedians, Naveen and Anand, who I because I wasn't sure that I could really do justice by myself uh, or along with Manoj too for the comedy of it. Right. So these two stand-up comedians who are Tamilians who understand the, the world, the context, right. the cultural, political context. So that's how. We, we, we riff, 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 finally he's like, you know, okay, this is it, man. Still climax is, climax, I'm not sure, but you know what, let's write screenplay. So, nothing is sequential, so, <clears throat> uh, the treatment is about, step outline is about 75% ready, I start writing the screenplay. So, as we progress, I realize that, you know, okay, wait, I need to approach the climax like this. New scene ideas come, there's no such thing as the final draft or the final version yeah. of the screenplay, you know it. So that's why I wrote, rewrote <coughs> 30 times almost. The 31st being the edit. So yeah. That's your last rewrite. So yeah, it's, writing is a lot of rewriting. 
Yeah. So I mean that to keep it very short, it's a lot of rewriting, and don't start writing. I don't start writing and exed roads Chennai. I do. I will go there last because that's basically documenting. Uh, and most of the time, writing happens here. People mistake the act of documenting as writing, but I think that you know most of the time you are writing. You even like right now, if I'm thinking about an idea at the back of my head. I consider that as writing. So you're not afraid of forgetting? Like supposing you're putting it all in your head alone. No, no. Uh, uh, what I meant by that is, uh, people confuse. Oh, uh, writer means you'll always be typing. Ah, yeah. Not yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, writer means. Well, you're thinking twenty-four-seven. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's the better the, the part of writing. Right. You were talking about end of Act Two, A, something like that. Do you believe in the act structure? See, I was t saying this the other day too. When you have a good story, it will automatically fall into the three-act structure. What is a story? Is a story is usually most of the most often than not the journey of a character or characters. Mm -hmm. So I was saying this uh, example, which I got on the fly when I was talking to someone. Let's say he has a breakup. Gandhi saying, yeah, he has a breakup with his wife, girlfriend, what have you? Okay. And uh, he is alive because of his cat, and he loves his cat. One day he comes back from work, and he re realizes his high-rise apartment is on fire, and the cat is stuck on the top floor apartment. What does he do? Is he going to risk his life, climb the facade of the this tall structure, and somehow save the cat, or he'll say, "Puna dana paravala inu noyankera"? Then there is no story. But he's a reluctant adventurer. He's like, should I? Should I? Hey, na pa, phone ekla. I don't know. Karomba gastam pa. Fire department have announced it. Anga. But he says, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna climb this. And thus, he locks into a journey. Yeah. End of act one. What happens after that? Is just act two. Was he able to reach the, that entire journey of ups and downs? I mean, ironically. <laughs> so, and he reaches the apartment. What did? Was he able to save the cat or not? Yeah. Is your Climax. Yeah, yeah. And the denouement will be like how they lived ha happily ever after, cat and him. <laughs> I'm just saying. I made this story on the fly, but the point is, it's a nice story. I realized it later. It's a nice story, but the way I say it, if I don't break this down, it's still a good story. Yeah. So <coughs> it's like grammar. You can break a rule sometime if it suits you. If it suits or if it suits the requirement, you can. Similarly, even screenplay also. Screenplay also, they said, do not break the fourth wall. I, no, that I'm is saying. yeah, that's a different so, thing. So, but it's like a thumb rule. Yeah, you know, I I look at the three act structure more of as a thumb rule. Yeah, than as a bible. Right. So you said that you know I had the story uh, of a guy, uh, and then it became the story of a woman. Now, the minute you make that, it becomes called like a woman centric film or a or a uh, you know like a female oriented script or something like that. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? First of all, I did not want it to be any centric in the first yeah. place because I was only looking at what will do justice to this premise of mine, to this story of mine. When we were discussing, uh, you know, when we realized this has amazing potential, uh, especially in the with the theme of uh, yeah, yeah, imposition, imposition part of it, I, I saw so many parallels there. Then I'm like, wait a minute, this this is juicy. I was. I, I'll be. I mean, uh, guys, don't hate me. Uh, I was selfish, greedy as a storyteller. You have to be. So I picked it. Yeah. Then I get asked why. Why did you do? So there are people who ask me why. Why are you doing a female centric? So I'm like nobody goes and asks Tarantino. Why did you do a female centric film called Kill Bill? Yeah. And I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do something like that with a female lead here and see. Oh, oh. I'm actually exasperated and tired that you know this. Why can't it be just stories? I mean, why does it have to have the tag female centric female? Sure, uh, feminist stories need to be told because they have been we have we continue to subjugate women. They have been subjugated over the millennia. Now it's probably a little better than it was ten years back. I hope. But the point is, their stories have to be told, uh, and Malayalam cinema is doing a great job of it, right? Like Jaya 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 hai, but told not preachily in a beautiful way. Where, yeah, yeah. Or the Great Indian Kitchen. Uh, these are these are great examples of great stories, and these great stories also happen. To, I I don't want to change the world honestly. Like I just want to fuck with it. So I have no intentions of preaching anything to anyone. My only greed 
as a storyteller is where do I find and poets need the pain and when there is I see a lot of pain happening on a daily basis to the women around me and I I was also not well informed well educated when I was growing up because I was, I'm a small town kid you know how it is in small town so it took me a lot of unlearning thanks to all the uh, strong women around me especially my wife uh, um, she asked me to say it so <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, she, uh, Chitra, uh, she's a doctor, she's an endocrinologist and there are things that I hear when she used to be in med school like when you are in the hospital you cannot wear jeans but men can, doctors can wear jeans. Shit, I mean stuff like that like really because uh, they will forget uh, the attire part. If there are two interns walking in the government hospital corridor and there is this patient a woman who usually government hospitals attract people from the rural uh, you know parts of bangalore district when they see they never call her the doctor all the assumption is always that the guy will be the doctor why will a woman be a doctor yeah so you see how deep rooted and entrenched this uh, whole patriarchy is so i'm like there are, there, are, there is a lot that i can tell yeah. and, but, but trust me i was not planning to do this it just happened i discovered it when i was trying to now flip the story around etc so so uh, <clears throat> there are stories and then there are stories that's about it i don't think it's like saying award cinema you remember those days yeah i think the reason people put this on a bucket is because of the producers a lot of whom hmm. they scared of you know a heroin or a film that has the protagonist as a female hmm. and this i've encountered first hand and i've also heard a lot of stories about how they are terrified about producing films with so that whole female centric film that tag comes from the fact that the supposed reality in this ecosystem is that people will go and watch men do anything but people will not not as many people will come and watch women being the center or the focus of a film is my reading of it i don't know just uh, yeah. uh, maybe uh, so at the end of the day it's the business uh, the business and uh, the argument has been that the men draw more tickets than uh, women sure then don't make a 300 crore film with women do a, a 50 crore film yeah what's stopping you from okay and it's your business i am nobody to tell you how to run uh, it yeah how to run it etc <clears throat> but there there have been enough stories I and mean, if you look at my inspirations have been those creators whether it is uh, whether it is uh, a k balachandran or a bhagiraj or uh, even bardiraja when is all these influences they have they have had amazing uh, uh, you know not just representation but the narratives uh, around these great uh, women characters whether it is a takkan varla enak but sindhu bharavi is one of my uh, favorites where it, it 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 is so i mean that story is so powerful in its it's so wonderfully twisted <laughs> exactly yeah. right i mean i mean that's uh, balchandra that's balchandra <laughs> but i just i just like i don't know anyway i could go off on a tangent on that I, but I, i just love how you know how twisted his films are in a wonderful way uh, he was a cruel storyteller he really loved them for it yeah and he's very cruel especially like imagine this guy is dating this girl and suddenly one day he realizes she's become his stepmom yeah. because the dad went and married her <laughs> i mean my mind was blown yeah so my inspirations have been uh, creators who have made sure that such beautiful women characters that died and and uh, i'll just say this last thing is even go to telugu like a jandiala who is a genius yeah, yeah. he is my inspiration now, now even janjala's films you should see the characters and in janjala's uh, sir's films is always uh, an ensemble cast yeah yeah every character stands out even a character comes in one scene and the women are wonderful so i maybe subconsciously i, I was influenced by them which is why my i mean even in family man even in you know no farzi you will never find uh, a a woman in the story is i mean i mean it won't be straight forward yeah yeah i've always at least i've strived to make it uh, uh you know make sure that it's interesting quirky edgy and with with layers that's that's what i like about like i don't know see obviously when when many people write something you know you don't know which one but for, for example devdarshini's character yeah in uh, family man you know that's that's a great example of what is a stock character which is police woman but with a lot of like like yeah. stories and layers and and she's she comes across as one way but then she's actually 
like you expand and you know it's it's beautiful you know, i told the casting guy saying do not look for anybody for this character i want this person <laughs> because i knew that she is known for her comedy yeah and she is a great actor if we bring her into this as a cop i know what she could do yeah yeah so it worked out <laughs> yeah yeah no so i think the the to, to just add a bit to that that whole thing see i completely agree that 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 we really lack people who can write interesting women but another thing that's also come about that is because apparently the people that that visit the theaters that is going to be the thing are mostly 18 to 24 year old or something like that and they just want fast paced narratives about men is the logic that is presented usually now again nobody knows anything in this business so the thing is but these are the theories that are typically sure. put forward yeah right then yeah. why are 95% of a film spelling they fail yeah yeah which means there is a problem with the logic right yeah i don't believe that do you see that that such that logic is so seriously limited like for example by that logic finding nemo should not be a hit in india yeah finding nemo forget men women it is it's, it's cartoons yeah how come people are like you know watching dubbed versions of finding nemo yeah uh, I, i mean for, for that matter anything Actually, I interviewed uh, Ram Gopal Verma, uh. and he was like, "How come Oppenheimer is such a big hit in India? Correct. Uh, you know, which is such a serious subject, and it's like, yeah. you know, and it's not about the women, but the, but for the point is, uh, like we we say that people want only easy entertainment, but that's not easy entertainment at all. Yeah, I see, and and also the thing is, as a storyteller, you will have to, especially in cinema, when you want to become a filmmaker, you will have to make that call. Are you going to be a McD, or are you going to be a gourmet restaurant? I want to be a gourmet restaurant. Right. Like, yeah, I might not make the shit tons of money. Fine, no problem. I have very limited needs in my uh, in in my life. So, uh, and this is like, like when you ask me, like, are you tired, whatever? But I, I am like a kid in a candy store right now. I'm I, I am eternally grateful to all those people that made possible, starting from Rajan D K to uh, you know Hambale, uh, who. allowed me to tell my stories i'm grateful for that everything else is secondary for me right so coming back to that this packaging irgidrima you have that engo edta part indenga fight or no set piece set piece action set piece i'm not saying it is good or bad i'm just saying i'm not that person right even when i write action that will be there there will be some humor in it so i am that person and i can write very serious stuff it's not like i can't the other thing is the serious lack of writing rigor like how long will you go and mount a project based on an actor's dates yeah i find that hard to digest saying uh, a production house is willing to punt hundreds of crores because they have one person's dates yeah. dates versus here is a great script uh my thing is that i hope there are producers who like humbale for example what have a directed nothing and other than family man at that time i think farsi hadn't come in hadn't come in right they had not, they knew nothing about me but they still punted on me yeah they are willing to take that uh, imagine after doing a kgf doing a, uh, their first uh, uh, their debut in tamil is a women centric <laughs> 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 i'm just saying so yeah. it takes a uh, there are producers who are willing to take chances things are getting better but not at the pace at which i want yeah you want to but did you always see yourself as a director no okay i am <coughs> uh the toughest job in this business is writing which is why there are not too many writers around and i never looked at it as a stepping stone to becoming director ah poka la eta apo koin da po it's not it's never that it's a two there are two different jobs uh are difficult in their own ways but i think that writing is the mula karta writing is your bl- blueprint foundation uh, what have you so without that uh, uh whether it is from director to uh rest of the artists and technicians etc this is the in the player suri uh, lana Really. So I, I get that. Why, why did I choose to direct uh, Raghutata? It's because I believe that there are a, there are a, my sensibilities slightly varied uh, when you compare that with uh, Raj and uh. you compare DKs. 
Raj is in DK's, their sensibilities individually are different. Yeah. It's another thing, three of us come together, we're going for a common, yeah, bigger yeah, yeah. goal. So there are certain stories which I want to be told with my sensibilities and my treatment intact. Right. Raghu Tata is one of them. And I, I, I will direct them. Will I write for others? Of course I will. I mean, I, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, what do you say, limited by that. Right. No, my question was more like, because directing is, it involves a lot of technical stuff. Not really. I disagree with that. Okay. So if you surround yourself with the right people. I've seen that in some places where the director has to go and select the color of the bottle, color of your shirt, color of the bottle. Then why do you hire costume designers? Why do you hire DOPs? Why do you hire... Uh, production designers, it's their job to, your job is to, this works for me, pick, help them create. Right. Yeah, they, they're you also unify artists. the vision. Yeah, they're yeah. also artists and that's somehow what happens is, so, like uh, I've seen this, costume designers don't get their due, they, I mean think about it, uh, editors don't get their due. I mean you hear this one name, two names, same with uh, uh, art, production design, you hear one name, you hear... Uh, but there are so many wonderful artists out there. Yeah. Who are, so all these guys come together and uh, same with uh, DPs. So what I did was in Raghu I brought them all together and said, guys, this is the design team. Make sure that you're not stepping on your toes. Like the location is brown. Don't make sure that the, they don't wear a brown shirt. So that you know, you know what I'm saying. So things like that. So there is a lot of synergy that goes. Uh, so the, I, see, uh, when you're an artist, uh, you're a guitarist, a songwriter, all you need is you. Right. When you're a painter, all you need is you. But when you're a filmmaker, you need an army. Yeah. So... It takes a village. And Raghutata is truly a product of that common uh, vision, shared vision, which I made sure that everybody understood what I'm trying to say. And that helped a lot. I think there's also a thing of how OCD you are about certain things which some people are and maybe, which is why they want control over every aspect of... Uh, exactly, I don't want control. I really don't care about the control yeah, of it. I yeah. don't want to be the boss there. I want to be the guy who who, who brought this vision yeah. to the table. Yeah. And I'm only selfish about the product. Yeah. Like if somebody comes and says, like for example, Yamani, the DOP, we were, we were on a set. The, originally in the story, the scene was supposed to happen in a farm by a mud road. So we were checking out this location. Yamani by mistake, she, by mist I don't know why she said it. Maybe she was reading something else. He said, okay, sir, so do our vararing, in the Sudhukati Varar. I said, what? Oh, sorry, sorry, I mean, it comes to this place. I said, no, 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 wait. I suddenly realized, saying I was never happy with this location because it's an important scene. Boom. Oh, you got the, the scene shifted to actually a burial ground. You have funeral pyres going and we shot it there. So I am greedy about that. Yeah. I'm not greedy about country. I don't want to go and tell her, "Ning yonge, seventy-five pounds, fifty pounds, ninga." That's not my job. Yeah. But I can say, "Innu konya close pona nallar kulla." Then she can decide the lens. Sometimes you do ask, saying, yeah. hey, "Can you go closer? What are you using now?" That is okay. But you don't. What is the point of telling the DOP exactly how to shoot? You might as well shoot, don't you? Get two camera assistants and shoot yourself. Why do you need a director of photography? Right. You just said that uh, for Devadarshini, you just said, "Don't look for anybody." This is the person that I want for this role. Was that the way for Keithi as well? I was not interested in the casting at all. When because when I was scripting, no, okay. No. I, I when I script, I don't think of write that, yeah. any names. Yeah. I don't. I'm not thinking of anybody. Now, as the story developed, they humble. They said this story needs an A-lister. This story requires a star. I said, guys. They said Keithi Suresh, and I had just watched Sani Kailu. I think she she's stellar, and I like the fact that she has done her, uh, uh, you know, a bit of movies, commercial, yeah, yeah. whatever. But I like the fact that there is a person who's willing to break that mold, risk it, and I suddenly I, I was very very saying yes, let's go now to convince her to do a com lead a comedy drama, play yeah. a lead in a comedy drama. So I, and she's you know her, I mean she's a national award winning actor, and yeah. so uh, that's the truth. Right, right. So right. humbly suggested. Because now, first time direct pandro, number pari actor, we don't get a that we can't do that. Number one, apprehension is there, but the other one, they said, uh, let's do this. 
you said that uh, you know whenever you're writing it's impossible not to have a little bit of yourself creep into your writing which bit of yourself are we going to find in ragutata there are a lot of easter eggs that i place but then i i mean a bit of me is in from my life uh like in the uh, trailer there is a line eh lari vati vachi et nasigire ona that wonderful actor called ismat banu yeah. says that line like this that line is from i don't want to name but that line is from uh, my family <laughs> or so she said uh, like in an office to register something they were expecting a bribe so quietly she said i know a lorry driver okay what talila <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm sure she meant it as a joke but i it, it when this character came in that line just proper uh, i do uh, like uh, devadashni's uh, character's name is alamelu my mom's name is alamelu so i keep doing this all even in uh, family man I, i everywhere i do sometimes people find out sometimes don't for example there is this uh, word of the day if you see the word of the day it's three <laughs> it's a reference to rajin bikes but so I, i like this there's a little bit of that i'm an intensely private person uh, in the in this though i do i come across as affable outgoing always with a joke uh, but i'm i'm very awkward and but i think there are a lot of people like that and i count myself as one of them who can put on a show yeah. in front of a camera yeah. or in front of yeah. an audience but we actually want to go back and lock ourselves in our rooms you know yeah, <laughs> it's <yeah>. like <laughs> <laughs> But anyway good to have talked to you and I really look forward to this film because I really like your writing and uh, been following you for a long time and uh, oh I didn't know this yeah I I've been following your your work for a work, long time right. yeah yeah so I mean I didn't know I, when you told me that that part I was surprised like that uh, that uh, fridge fridge yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I I I love that anecdote and it it was very it was very strange and also very touching that somebody would actually think of Listen there is an appliance in your house <laughs> that's that's <coughs> you know they're chugging <laughs> chugging away on a daily basis no, I felt basis. really happy you made my day with that say because even I forgot about it yeah everybody like in my friend circle they ask oh now that you have uh, become in tamil you have become a director so how come you are not doing interview with bharadwaj rang i'm like nay avaru ku ponnanda so yeah so that's a box i can check now i think Good. but and, and i got i got i got a box check saying i want to meet suman kumar and i did that <laughs> though we've technically met and said hi yeah, before yeah, yeah. yeah but i it was nice to chat to you chat yeah. to you so i hope uh, yeah made made it worth while <laughs> it is it is and i really look forward to this film good luck with it it's Thank coming so out on the 15th, 15th of august, august yeah. yes all yeah. right theater la vandu paarenga friends with friends and family varu paarenga thank you to Europe starts from rupees 99999 only with GT Holidays South India's number one travel brand